This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for brekkie, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight <laughs> to your door. They just drop them at your door, people. You'll save time and eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while taking all of your holiday to-dos in stride with good meals in the tum-tum. If you're too busy with all this stuff, these meals are easy. Easy to get done. They taste great. All you've got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 and use code expandingreality50 to get 50% off. That's code expandingreality50 at factormeals.com slash Expanding Reality 5-0 to get 50% off. This podcast is sponsored by Skylight Frame. If you're looking for a great holiday gift, there is nothing more meaningful than a Skylight digital picture frame. Skylight is a touchscreen frame that everyone in the family can send photos to from anywhere, and they'll pop up in seconds. It is the perfect gift for new families, parents, and grandparents, or anyone who has all of their photos stuck on their phone. With Skylight, you can actually preload photos before you give it as a gift, without even opening the box. Once it's unwrapped and plugged in, the frame will light up with all those special memories. Surprise your loved ones this year with a beautiful Skylight frame, now available in multiple sizes and colors. Grab yours today because they're very popular and sell out around the holidays. For a limited time, you can get $15 off your purchase when you go to skylightframe.com slash Mary. That's right. To get $15 off your Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash Mary. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash Mary. A choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding Reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, we got the honor of sitting down with Caitlin Romaine, who is on her self-proclaimed journey of becoming nobody. On this episode, guys, we really break down what it feels like to go through this transition from your old or 3D self, as we put it, uh, to this new um, area that we find ourselves in with the the spiritual growth occurring, uh, not only globally, but personally. We talk a lot about identity, about breaking down the layers of self, about balance, uh, and about all of the things that make you who you are. And that's an interesting question. Uh, it goes a lot deeper than you think. And so that's why we have this amazing conversation. So uh, Caitlin is wonderful. Uh, she is a member of Soul Space, which I will be linking down in the show notes. So you guys go check that out. Also down there in the show notes is going to be our website, expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is where if you want to expand your interaction with the show here, that's where all the socials, Rockfin, uh, videos are all up there, uh, Patreon. We have all of that stuff going on. So just check the show notes for further information on that. So Without any further ado, let's get to this incredible conversation with Caitlin Romaine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming to the show. It is uh, Caitlin Romaine, like the lettuce without the E, and we are absolutely excited to have you here. You are a treasure to the world, and I cannot wait for my audience to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, so before we launch into everything, do you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. So like you said, um, I'm basically a piece of lettuce without the E. Uh, Caitlin, I know Brandon through, well, originally through a Facebook group, uh, Amy Belair's, and then uh, through working with St. Daniel. I, uh, like I told you, I'm not sure exactly, because a lot of people I'm sure come on here and tell you about their platforms or what they do for a living. And I am not doing that. So I don't, I could tell you about Caitlin, the person, Caitlin, the, I don't, I don't know. I'll just say I am a fellow soul on this journey, doing a lot of following where I'm drawn to go, 
which uh, is so cool with the people that I've been able to meet along the way. And I think that's what we're going to talk about. But uh, I am a 31 year old, if we're going to go the 3D route, 31 year old Caucasian female with a two year old son who um, sometimes detests the 3D world, but uh, often finds so many fun little warp loopholes in there to make it a good time. You know, and it is interesting that we keep referring to this as the 3D world. I know that we all kind of talk about like that this is a level that we're all, you know, slumming it to dial down to. And and know it feels that way. And especially the more you get uh, more enlightened to some greater truths, you start looking around at the world and it doesn't, your observation doesn't match what people are telling you. And uh, it's, it's, the, it's this like wanderlust thing of just kind of floating through this existence, figuring this out that is uh, tricky, but also rewarding. And so I definitely want to get into um, who you are, which is interesting that you are making the grand attempt to become no one, which is fascinating to me. Uh, you're <laughs> Identity is uh, releasing your identity, which is great. I like the irony, and I like I, li- I just like it all around. Uh, but also, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit, of, uh, spend a little time with you today on the integration of these ideas into a 3D vessel, because we all kind of grew up in a different way than what is being presented to us. I also kind of wanted to touch a little bit deeper on that. So let me ask you this, just straight out the gate. So who are we? Oh, I think... I love that you're talking about this integration because what I've been working on is uh, being, like you said, nobody, but that means being everyone. So I believe we are all, in essence, whatever label you want to put down to it, we are a piece of the the isness that surrounds us all. Now, what makes it fascinating, I think, to me is we're walking around basically with this idea of who we think we are. And that's based upon our, you can call it ego, our personality, our emotions, the, the body that we have. But if you were to um, close your eyes and then all of a sudden, let's just pretend I can do this, just make you a man or you are a man, make you a woman, but then who is you? Like you're still you. So when I started going into exercises like that, it kind of blew my mind. So that is honestly where I have been finding the biggest challenge and the biggest, it's so interesting too, is to integrate, to have all these ideas, discover them through others as well as on my own, and then dive back into being a mother, you know, and that role can feel really constrictive at times. So it's that's that question I think is a beautiful one because that's what we are we're all trying to figure out and you'll see it everywhere really where it just says at least in our community you know remember who you are and that just kind of stuck to my mind reminding me of Lion King too and I was just like I could hear it like in Mufasa's voice Mm -hmm. in my head like remember who you are (laughs) and it was just I'm like okay well who the hell is that? You know, so I, I'm having a difficult time coming up with a simple answer to your question. And I think that's why when it gets down to it, a lot of us just end it there with I am, you know, I am. Well, and what's interesting is you touched on several very interesting topics there, which is identity. And what does that mean? You know, are you your sex? Are you your hair color? Are you your, you know, what? And I love how when you described yourself, you described a 3D version or a a physical uh, vessel that we can see in front of us. But that doesn't necessarily mean who you are, which I think deconstructing the identity is something that's very important in any Uh, period of self-growth that you're going through. A lot of people don't embark on that. And that's not who we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on folks like me and you who've decided that uh, what we see around us is not mirror uh, the feelings and what we were told and what comes out of the TV. A good amount of time, not what comes from our parents and our upbringing, uh, which is a whole nother thing because I want to ask you about something as a mother as well. But also this, this concept of remembering but also creating it's like so are we here to remember who we used to be or who we used to create or who we used to remember that we had to discover through remembering in another life perhaps or are we creating this which means that in the remembering part of it it's not necessarily remember 
and mimic a quality or a personality that you used to possess or possess at a higher level. It's basically like you creating that and remembering that you are a creator. So do you think that there's anything to us just simply being creators or do you think that we have to remember and that is the way in which we create? I think, and this is where it's fun and funny because I think who we are is beyond the brain, but that's the only method through which we can, you know, at least communicate these ideas and which with which we try to work through these ideas. So it can be a really confusing channel, especially at that point where you, because I think it's both, I guess, because to create and or remember you, I'm not going to say you need, but it definitely helps to go through the process of letting go of who you think you are currently. So you need to let go of those. And so in that sense, that is that, that in of itself, I think, is a creation because you're creating this new concept of yourself as um, nothing or everything. And then from that point on, which is really fascinating to me because I've, I've gone, I've looked at like two roads a lot of people or take when they're working through this process. It's either they see their personality and then they work with it on changing those, but like, you know, I am abundant. I am this, I am that. And then there's the other one, which is more working as the observer where you don't really work through those things. You see them and then you let go of them. So I think you could go, you could lean more towards one than the other. And I think when you are letting, <clears throat> or when you are working with the personality and you're calling things in through manifestation, then you are, if I feel at least you are working more with the creator role where, and I, I'm not so much leaning down that, that way. I'm at least at the moment going more in the observer role. And I found it interesting to listen to folks like Michael Singer and Ram Das who say like, you know, sure you can, sure you can create, you can bring whatever you want to the universe, you know, to you, but why would you want to? So I, I think it, I think it's both in this, it, and then that's a choice. So, you know, that in and of itself is creation. Although then you go with the, well, if everything happens exactly how it's supposed to, am I even choosing at all? And the answer that I think we need to become okay with is yes. You know, it's just both, which is where a lot of the surrender and acceptance comes in, at least on my part. I, I love the way you put that because you're absolutely right. Whenever you look at things like creating your reality, it is it brings a lot of questions like, okay, free will. Is free will even exist? If it's already predetermined and predestined, as some folks believe in and really stick to, then is is your ability to create your reality hindered by the fact that it's already predestined or that it's already decided in the stars and that you're just basically following a path, uh, you know, following a string through a dark cave where you can't see what's in front of you, but it's all laid out. It's all ready to go. There are other turns and passages you could take, but you're not supposed to let go of that string. And so then you you kind of find out that if you were to break off of that and to utilize your free will to hop to another string to go down a different cavern, is that then predetermined destiny? Were you always predetermined to do that? And that the string is more of a guideline or a metaphor for the choices that you've made up to that point that have led you to where you find yourself. And then you can always splinter off and go do something else. The, the question really is about balance. It's about finding what you love in life and then being able to balance uh, being grounded in this 3D, as we affectionately call it, uh, and then also being able to fly and soar and be with the larger creator, which in a sense is something that, you know, we're meant to do here. Uh, I, I really kind of think that this is up to us. And if you are going by a predetermined path kind of a thing, then what that would mean to me would just be the evidence that time is infinite, that everything happens all at once, and that you're choosing which path has already been executed on a cosmic scale. But from your perspective, it's new to you. But all of it's laid out. It's all ready. It's like rooms or games that have been pre-designed that you can step into and engage and interact in. But it's, it's not like you're creating it. It's like you're creating the decision to go into something that's already there and you're just picking which room you walk into. All of the rooms are built. You're just picking which one to step into. That It's that balance between these higher concepts but also 
you know, standing in line at the DMV or, um, you know, uh, interacting with people who don't think on these concepts. That's, I think, that whenever you get to a level, I don't know if it's an early stage or maybe a more ad- advanced air quotes or like you've invested more time in the idea stage. But it, it seems like once you get to that point, it's very challenging. Um, for me personally, it's very challenging. I can usually talk to anybody about anything, but usually if we're not talking about like UFOs or something crazy and just blowing my mind, it's crazy. And especially like doing the show now, uh, I've kind of got this um, dopamine sensitivity to it. You know, it's like I've got these incredibly high conversations that I have with amazing people such as yourself all the time. And then when that, so that threshold for crazy kind of just keeps expanding, which is really, really interesting. Have you found that in your own personal life that it's kind of tricky to balance the esoteric concepts with the interactions with normies or muggles? Uh, Yes, definitely. And I find myself because I'm in this process of wanting to let go of identities to see what else is out there. Not that the identity is bad, so to speak, but just that it can be constrictive. And I think the point I would like and working to get to is to identify or just to, you know, like you had uh, touched on earlier, that idea of kind of a union with the, the grander source or spirit. So just to more go along that path and then whomever is in front of me at the time, sure, I can be whoever they need me to be because I don't care because none of them are me. So, but I get so, especially with the the identities that cling the hardest, you know, the, the, the rockiest part, the most solid part of the illusion, like a mother or a daughter or somebody who needs to pay rent, you know, things that just kind of touch in on that primal those primal things that I think we as humans come with, you know, the fear of survival and the need to protect your family and those things, they, I find that to be the most constrictive because then I get frustrated because, you know, it's almost like the response is actually hilarious because it's like, don't you understand? I'm trying to be nameless and timeless right now. I don't want to deal with your diaper. Like that's just, you know, but in addition, yeah, the, the people that I run into at the grocery store or I took an Uber a couple of days ago and just talking to, you know, the guy in there for, you know, 20 minutes. And it's just, I, I even sat there having a thought of, I could be this person who in the past would people please and go along with whatever it is that he wanted me to say. And so, but I, I chose not to. So instead I sat there in this very strange silence and just very aware at the same time running through my brain, this man and I come from the same being and it's being expressed in this way. Now this interaction is predestined, so to speak, for those of you who can't see there's air quotes there. And it, uh, it just, yeah, yes. So the, the short answer is yes. I find it difficult to navigate, especially wanting to, just follow this path, which I believe I always am, but, and at the same time, I care about people. So I have that natural inclination to want to see people fulfilled and happy. So it's, you know, not giving, not just bending over backwards to make whatever they need to be or want to be true, true you know, just be that person or do that thing for that person because I care. But, you know, in the same time, keeping in my mind that I'm a, I'm a soul interacting on one level, on one level, I'm Caitlin with the social security number and all these things. Another level, I, you know, my personality and in another level, I'm a soul that's come here to do whatever it needs to do to run off all this karma, however you want to go about that. And then another level, I'm nothing at all because we're all part of the same thing. So I find myself even almost like rising out of my body as I'm watching myself have these interactions with people. And it's fascinating because when I'm doing that, I find that I, it's not that I care less. It's like I have, how do I put this? A spiritual, it's like spiritual eyes and a human heart. So I, this is, I know this is, I'm not sure if this is answering your question anymore, but I, I find that to be a difficult, sticky area, especially when I've, because the route I've chosen goes along with, because I, I kind of sat down at one point and said, do I want to be happy or do I want to be free? 
And I chose that I want to be free. And I believe that will lead to the, the biggest happiness. So, it, or it's just what I'm choosing for now. It could very well change um, or the meanings could change. But to do that, I, cause I kind of do things like the Kool-Aid man, you know, breaking through the wall, like, just like, oh yeah. So I'm like, okay, what makes me super uncomfortable? I'm going to do that. And then I watch myself and I spin out, you know, and then I think something has gone horribly wrong. And then I see it from the other perspective and I am aware that, okay, so my emotions and my mind are not always accurate portrayals of what's going on. And um, so in that sense, when I'm having those interactions with people that I find uncomfortable and then I see them from the other perspective, a different perspective of, okay, maybe you know, there's a, there's a deeper meaning that I sometimes have access to, and sometimes I do not, but I operate with the understanding of, or I try to, that I don't need to understand and that there's something bigger going on here. And, but so if, as you can tell, if all of that's going on inside of you while you're just taking an Uber, of course it's difficult. Like that's just, most people are like, Oh, oh maybe yeah. do you like your job? Okay, cool. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, they're on Facebook or, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's a little difficult when you're purchasing bananas to be, you know, staring at a banana and thinking it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. And then somebody bumps you and then all of a sudden you're, you know, Caitlin again, like very irate. And then yes, yes. It's a really interesting place to be. It it really is. Now you said something that you had to make the choice between freedom or happiness. What in your mind made them separate or made you feel like you couldn't be abundant enough to have both? And that's a really, really good one, because this is why I gravitated towards the people such as um, Michael Singer and Ram Dass, because I had such a, and I still do, I've just, I look at it as an observer most of the time, and I have worked with it, but I have, I can, I can have such a harsh inner critic voice that, and I'll be very blatant, I had a psychosis at one point, And that was the scariest thing I'd ever been through in my life. And it was, I couldn't, I didn't know what was going on with my brain. And I thought things that weren't real or who's to say, you know, who is even to say, but at that time it, it was like my brain completely turned on me and I was seeing and hearing violent, awful things that society would damn you for. So in a certain sense, I thought I was damned and I had to, you know, I needed a place where anything that happened in my brain was okay. I needed to be fully 100% accepted rather than always choosing for um, I am one thing or the other thing. So I, what brought me peace was being all of it and so therefore being none of it. So when you are having a difficult time, a lot of people I know have difficulty with intrusive thoughts and they, they sit there and they fight them. And I did that thing where I, you know, I looked it up online. I did all of the, you know, the like WebMD, your brain basically. And you'll find a lot of different uh, tactics and I think they all have merit. And the interesting thing is I find them all to be traps. And I think all methods are traps, honestly, and that's the point of them, but you have to be trapped by them for them to work is eventually you break out beyond it because we cannot be contained. But I, so I was battling with this awful voice, um, which is actually how I found Zane. Zane, uh, for those of you who don't know, has an interview with Brandon as well. And he works with um, removing negative entities from people. And I asked him one day, you know, do I have one? And (laughs) he just said, you know, you better set up a consult with me. And I was like, oh, crap. (laughs) <laughs> and so I, I did. And then I, I worked with him and that was one of the pivotal steps on my path because once I was able to talk to him and tell him all of the, the things that were frightening me that I couldn't say to people, like things in a violent nature against the smallest of our society that I didn't believe and but they were popping up in my head and for him to look at me and just say okay well i love you unconditionally and that's the path that i i felt i guess so that i was called to go upon and i have found so much empathy and compassion in that route where and it makes sense to me 
that because there's so many levels and layers to this, but and it's so difficult because if you go down that road, which I am, you have to, or you don't have to, but it's a challenge to be able to look at the people you detest the most and remember who they are behind their incarnation. And they in of themselves also have that divine spark in them. And they also have karma they're working on, and they are also part of everything. And it, it, it's just, it's stretching my heart. And I just have an innate, feeling that that is something that I am here to do. Like when I look at you right now, Brandon, I see you, but I also see this beautiful being of light behind whatever it is that you're saying or doing. It's just there and it's beautiful. And we are two souls going about our lives right now. But what's basically going on is two souls hanging out. We're just kind of, it's like we're using this vehicle of identities and whatever has happened uh, to get us to this point to just kind of hang out for an hour or so. and. So I guess once I started going down that path, I initially it was because of fear and difficulty, but now it's at a challenge and kind of like um, an inner warrior sense, I guess. And a, like I said, I do things like the Kool-Aid man. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way. You know, we're not going to say I love you and you and you, except for you, because now that does not mean I love everything everybody does, right? Because right. that's that's ridiculous. Then, and it, I'm talking about a different kind of love. It's not like I'm not going to send flowers and birthday cards and toys to everybody, you know, on death row. It's that's not what's happening. But it's being able to see beyond that that nothing is happening at the same time that everything is. So you can tell it's kind of blowing my brain. That's why I'm going like this. <laughs> it's like, this is what happens every time. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> um, so I, I guess you face the more, the stickier parts of your identity and those of others, but then you have those moments where you break through it and you have the most beautiful feelings of just, you feel your heart grow. And I, I guess that is a choice. That is a want. I, that's where I want to live is in that ability. Like you do, you talk to anyone. And I uh, came here with, kind of, I guess, a fear of people and being judged. So, and just, I don't know, just an innate fear at some point. Oh God, people will hurt you. You know, that, that that's frightening. And I am so inspired by all these stories I hear from, uh, like the people I've mentioned of just, yeah, you know, just, you just, you love people and it's not because you have to, or because you're trying to be good, but because they're on a deeper sense, they're you, they're not your, your personhood, but they are not what we understand you and I to be, but they are, we, we are all this thing. And so why would I hurt you? It doesn't feel good to hurt me. It, like, it's kind of selfish in a weird way. It's like, why would I hurt you? That's just hurting me. Well, Bill Hicks had a great thing about this. He said that, uh, you know, what's going to happen to the arms industry when they realize that we're all one, you know, and uh, we're, we're bombing each other. So, uh, you know, I find this duality uh, very interesting, especially when it comes to the fractal nature of what uh, a lot of folks, myself included, have kind of observed about this reality. It's that you get like an either or. And this concept of freedom or happiness is what fascinates me, because even that um, is a dial that can be adjusted, right? They can be married to be the same thing. I correlate them to be the same thing. I'm the happiest when I'm free and I'm the freest when I'm happy. And so mm. this this concept, though, of the split difference of everything around here and kind of gauging or calibrating your existence and what you feel you your role in this place is based off of the role and existence of others around you is very interesting. And even that is kinetic. It's always in flow. It changes. And so whenever uh, we talk about this, I, I kind of go with two different things whenever you talk about the dualistic nature, especially within in the individual or within your identity. And one of the ways uh, a lot of us have, and I think we all have this side, I think we have masks that we wear for everyone that 
hide a deeper thing due to societal pressures, due to cancel culture, due to uh, taboos, due to all of these things that really are here as a barrier for you really being a complete being, which is this unsightly side of you that we all have, which is what's fascinating about this. Uh, we all have this. So why not be able to express and integrate it rather than hide and let it fester? I've got my own uh, reason why I think that that model is um, encouraged, uh, but that's a different thing. It's real conspiratorial. Then we have the hero side of us where there, it's almost like some. a lot of times we play like this Clark Kent Superman thing just for the analogy. That we are one person when we walk around with our glasses and we work at Daily Planet. And then on another level... But they exist at the same time. You're Superman, you know, or you're this hero that can go out and do these incredible things, uh, such as these uh, spiritual awakening concepts, being able to rationalize your place in this place without the aid of other people telling you who you are, with being able to assert your own self and integrate the own experiences that you've had into this reality. Um, you know, unprompted, the, being able to help people, all of these wonderful, altruistic, beautiful things, picking a turtle up and moving it out of the road. You know, it's these little things when no one's around, right? It's that little stuff. That's where you're the superhero, the single mom, uh, the people who are out there uh, with challenges, taking care of their parents, doing whatever they can on whatever kind of budget the 3D gives them, right? There's a lot of challenges here. But I think in everyone, we have the masks and we have the superheroes. And that's the masks that superheroes wear is what you have in the middle. And that's kind of what's presented most of the time. Now, again, this concept of either or is fascinating to me. Do you think, because uh, we'll relate it like this. So before I was not the same person I am now, but it took me being not who I am now to be who I am now. Uh, and then, you know, who knows what, what the next version of this will be. So do you think that we're always destined to play this role of two people or do you think that maybe eventually we kind of fuse them into one and really are able to exist as the superhero that's come out of the closet basically that doesn't need the alternate persona anymore well that's actually fascinating because what i think or my theory on what happens is the more the less you try in a sense to hammer in specific things about yourself that you want and the more you just are in a sense and you let go i think you actually end up becoming that person and i feel as if a lot of those characteristics that we all aspire to especially those of us on this path they're not things like i want to be super greedy or i want to be this or i want to be that a lot of the times, you know, they, they do start or they, you know, they'll say, I want to be abundant, but the meaning of abundance changes as you go along. So you end up being all these things that you wanted, but I, I don't think it's by choosing, so to speak, because I think something that people attract, people can get caught in is trying to be good because then it's kind of like, you know, the 10 commandments or, um, you know, those rules, just basically those rules on how to be a good person. And I think so one of the dangers, which there's nothing wrong with, but I, I feel like they're mainly for people who are not aware of all of this so that they don't cause too much damage um, that, you know, eventually they'll have to work on at some point. But it, it, it's kind of relates to what I said earlier, where the more you go progress down this path, the more you end up embodying those qualities that you know you previously would have been you know why aren't you a good person caitlin why aren't you this why aren't you that when you end up embodying that when you come into a union with all that is now something really fascinating and the reason why i love ram das is something he had said when people would come to him and talked about uh, being you know drinking too much or being greedy or whatever he would say sure go be greedy go drink go do you know go have a trip you enjoy it go we'll have it because he i guess he'd always push people back into the world so that they could experience it and then when they're ready then they'll fully then when they you know are done with their trip of being whatever it is that you know they want to be or feel trapped in then they can let it go and that just suggests to me that it's like it's the letting go and not so much the you know, grasping at something. Hmm. 
It's a brilliant way to put it. And I completely agree. A big fan of Ram Dass. His talk, uh, he just had like a conversation in a cafe with Terrence McKenna, and it was absolutely incredible. One of the coolest like conversations. Like it's that's one of those if you could have dinner with three people, whatever, it'd be oh, yeah. you and Ram Dass and, and Terrence McKenna, and that'd be awesome. And we just sit around and just figure out the world. But I'm with you on this. So it's it's this interesting balance, I guess, is kind of the best way to put it. But there's the there's balance in the chaos. You know, there's there's the ability for you to go out, express yourself, make like we'll just call it failure, you know, go out and fail because that's the best teacher, you know, that's your springboard instead of, you know, analyzing and overanalyzing before you execute or not executing anything at all, just simply due to your overanalyzation, then you don't get any actual field work done or any experience done, which is kind of, if you, if you go with the, you know, law of one and that we're all one, we're all experiencing itself subjectively. That's your whole damn point here. That's the whole reason you or God or whatever, the highest consciousness wanted to split apart and experience it itself, but also to that, by not experiencing the things that came here to experience, it's also experiencing that, which all, all of this is, is beautiful, all of it, the journey of each individual person here, the interactions between other people on different levels of journeys. And I, I like what you said about uh, kind of the rules that are in place. I kind of view that uh, as either an option for people who, yes, definitely need that, or it's kind of a soul academy, you know, and they're kind of freshmen or whatever, you know, they're in the lower level, so they kind of need uh, the training wheels, if you will. Um, but this concept of being on a path, do you think that that exists? Do you think that there's one path? For each individual or just, okay. Um, that goes back to, I think, uh, the predetermination concept and most days i choose to believe that there is because it can be especially given the nature of what i'm doing you know just hitting all my sore spots and then I, my brain and my emotions i'll feel like like i've said something has gone horribly wrong what are you doing like you can't be proposing to your deodorant in a fedex parking lot that is something <laughs> insane people do caitlin now that is that is something i did and <laughs> What'd they say? Oh, there was just a couple people like standing there, uh, just kind of watching me. And um, uh, no one really said anything, but they paused to look. It was a bit odd, I, I, I am sure. Um, I mean, I, your deodorant. Oh, my deodorant. Oh, um, God. That's a, you know, I don't think it ever gave me an answer. I still have it. So I think we're at an impasse there. I mean, it hasn't run away yet, but I wouldn't say it's the most healthy of relationships. <laughs> So you could say it's dried I, up, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. We're stuck together for the time being. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I do things like that. And so I, I take comfort in the fact that, yeah, it, and I don't always believe it in the moment because my belief sometimes comes or I, I don't feel it in the moment, I should say, but yeah, I believe that we are on a path that I can't really screw up. And it helps to hear other people remind me of that too. Um, and when I am able to quiet down, I, because I, I've, I'm trying all the things really. I tried um, combo. I tried Sananga. These are all, you know, all different methods of just growth and letting go of things and it's interesting too. And that's another tangent because I find when I do those things, I get very into my personality and then I'll have a really hard time. And then a day after or so, I will kind of see it from a different perspective and be like, you know, oh, it's in, you were just very into your specific traumas and difficulties. And so, yes, that made it, that made, you know, you felt, it's like, I get, I feel very within the skin tight thing of Caitlin. And then I emerge from that, you know, feeling more spacious. But um, I was doing something a week ago and I was feeling just so like, kind of like we were talking about before the show, just so squeezed and just so all these emotions and all this pressure. And, and then, you know, there's that thing, oh, you're supposed to be happy all the time because love and light and blah, blah, blah. And um, that little song plays in my head sometimes too. But I was able to quiet and breathe and I got, I got an answer from you know, not audibly, but from whether you want to call it your intuitive heart or what have you, where it was just an understanding of from when you're having these difficulties, you know, gifts come from that just the same as when you're going through the, uh, the times when you feel at one with everything. 
because even those other feelings that you're having, the heavier ones are part of this experience. And that's generally where you, you grow and you expand and you become capable of either absorbing more, seeing more, relating to more. Every time my heart breaks, it's like a shell cracks and I can let more in. So I just got this, this knowing that what I was going through, I didn't have to do anything because a lot of the time I feel like I have to fix it when something, when it feels like something is wrong um, within at least. I, I had this intuitive knowing that I didn't have to fix it. All I had to do was just be in it. So, and that I was on the path and it, whatever, you know, the path is, which I think the funny thing is, I think, yes. So yes, I think there is a path, but at the same time, (laughs) no, because you, all it is, is you here to experience and it can feel very serious in one sense. And people get very um, caught on what is my mission here? What am I here to change and accomplish and do? And do, 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 especially for those of us in the West, we always have to do. Um, but I, at the same time, if you're looking at it from a different vantage point, it's just play. You know, it's all just play. We are, and that's horrible to remember, or it's hard to remember if somebody dies or it's something, you know, somebody has cancer, somebody, what have you. It's just, it's so, so difficult. And that's where I find the sticking point is to have, there's nowhere to stand, I think, you know, which is something that Mr. Doss says as well is, you know, you can't, you're not fully in the human area, but not fully divine either. It's why you're, you're in this weird place. And that's where you, I, for me, at least right now is the way I'm getting through it is just, with the faith that there is something and maybe it's not always a linear path as we understand a path to be, uh, but who, I mean, it, it, things happen sometimes that, you know, you worry and fret about, and then all of a sudden something just appears. And then you think like, for instance, being a single mom, sometimes money is tight. And I, you know, I, I went through a panicky stage and at some point started taking surveys online for money and just was like, oh my God. And then it turned out the next day because of COVID, I didn't have to pay rent that month. And I'm just thinking, well, who am I to, you know, go predicting the future there and worrying about that when this was going to happen anyway. So it, it's just letting go, I guess, of that. So there is a path and there isn't a path. <laughs> Yeah, to what you last said, uh, in Texas, we call that don't go borrow in trouble. Don't go building bridges you're never going to cross, right? That's it just basically is a sweet way to say don't worry about things that may or may not happen, right? Now, one of the interesting analogies I heard, and why I was just curious about your interpretation of the path is, is that I heard uh, life and your existence in life be described as a fruit tree, right? So uh, if you follow any branch, any branch at all, eventually, you know, there's a bunch of splits and they all kind of diverge in different directions. Uh, But eventually you hit the end of it where fruit grows at the end of all of it. So it seems like that the perspective that I like the most, if we're if we're talking about comfort here, would be just that the only way to lose is not to play. Like you just engage, you just be here, be you. Whatever path you take is your path and it's all good. There's no judgment on the other side. And we know this from a lot of people who come back with NDEs and your death experiences that talk about that, that it's the warmest, best place they've ever been and that there's no judgment, that the afterlife judging that happens happens from you in a review of your life, right? So uh, it... It is interesting to me, though, everyone's personal preference and choice, and the I think deeper that we get into these kind of understandings, the more beautiful that it gets. It definitely gets more confusing and fractal, as we said earlier, but it definitely gets more um, comforting and exciting at the same time. So this is what's so interesting to me as well. When you open these new worlds and these new doors, and you have so many things to think about, interact with, and engage with, uh, things like we said in the 3D, you got to go you know, buy strawberries or whatever, or go stand in line at the DMV. All of those things are necessary for additions to the experience that we have here. And so dialing down or slumming it a little bit to come in the 3D and hang out, you are presented with those kinds of things. And of course, just like anything in life, it's just about how you perceive it, how you interact with it and engage with it. So one of the other interesting things though that I find is is that I'm I find the the more I get into these kind of concepts and exploring these ideas, the less grounded I get. 
So, and by grounded, I mean, my, I just have no desire ability really some days, uh, to integrate into the 3d life and go, you know, get an LLC for the show or whatever. It's like this, this weird, like it, it's hard to dip back into bureau- bureaucracy and to engage in that. So how did you find balance in, in everything going on with this? Like your ability to high vibe and, and all that. And then also, yeah, your need to uh, put food on the table. I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> Same answer. You Same know, answer. I was hoping you could yeah. tell me. No, I mean, that's where the frustration comes sometimes because I end up feeling trapped um, because some things have to be done. But I guess the, the way that I'm experimenting with it now is because I kind of look at every single thing in my life as a means of yoga, so to speak. So it's as a means of awakening. So because I don't have the same ability to go to, you know, an ayahuasca ceremony or um, really anything for extended periods of time because I am a single mom. And then so if everything happens the way it's supposed to, and this is my path, this is my dharma, whatever you want to call it, karma and dharma, then it's, it's like all of these things are here to show me where it is that I'm caught. And it, it's like, if I'm looking at my son and he's screaming about something ridiculous, which I deem to be ridiculous, it's, it's like I'm seeing my, um, my karma, my brain just writ out right there in front of me, you know? So it's just, you know, that right there in like bold, big letters is where I'm caught. So if I'm having difficulty with, um, Cause you know, I do a lot of the back end stuff for Zane as well. And so sometimes, you know, I, I do have that thought of, I like, I'm an interdimensional being. What in the hell does this matter? You know, why am I it, like doing all this is ridiculous. And then I, and again, I don't always, I have to go with the faith of not always having the answer because I won't always get the answer, especially when I'm in a frustrated state of mind, but knowing that it is there for my awakening it's and thankfully it lines up with the leaning into what's uncomfortable part uh, path of what i'm doing because a lot of things make me uncomfortable that i need to do on a daily basis so it's actually been very cool because that that so in a way it has it, ha- it does not always initially provide me with a sense of calm and serenity, but it does provide me with a sense of growth because I get to such, oh my God, Brandon, heightened states of like wanting to just, you know, just, oh my freaking God. And then I, it's like, I see it from the observer point of view. And then it just, because it gets so heightened, I realize I'm able to recognize it's ridiculous because it is just so ridiculous. So rather than walk around trying to avoid all these things that trigger me, I kind of turn around and stare at them. Like, what, what, what do you want? You know? And so from that point I can kind of let go and it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't bother me anymore, but I, I get a different eyesight. So I was like, I can walk around the room, see, and like almost see all the meaning that I have given everything. The reason it's bothering, because really it's just energy. It's just a thing that's around and whatever, but it's bothering me because of meaning that I'm, you know, subconsciously giving it because this is what it means to me. And it's interacting with what I want or what I don't want, or with my past or with whatever is going on in my brain. And it, that's, you know, fabricated in a certain sense. And so I'm therefore able to just kind of look at it from that other perspective and say, well, that's, 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 that's ridiculous. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to live my life like that. So in that sense, that's why I had said like the happiness versus freedom, because it is happiness, but it's a different sense of happiness. It's freedom, happiness, where I, I am walking all like the other day when we were having that a conversation with Zane and other people through Voxer. And I was, I was in that weird dual mood where, cause I had just had to take, you know, do the, where I work two, three jobs, two, I guess. And then taking my son to the doctor and then dropping him back off at daycare and then coming back and then and all these things. And I was feeling so triggered by everything and everyone I was feeling bombarded. And I kind of got to such a heightened state that I was able to flip it. And so instead I, I felt such empowerment and such freedom for walking towards those things. 
rather and just realizing that they're it's all fabricated i i have the power to change the meaning of what's there or if not change it um actively and this goes back into duality not change it to something else but in, in a concrete sense but you can let it go so instead of working through it you know i am upset about this lamp because at one point a lamp just like this was on on one dark night when somebody broke into my house and blah, 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 blah. so instead of instead of that i can look back and or you know step back and look at it from this perspective a different perspective of this is all a game so to speak it's and i can i just see it from this broader view and i can i still feel it in my in this body and you know i i have i still feel the chargedness in my head and in my body but i'm able to um walk just walk freely through it so that's why i had said it's not the integration process is not always happy and that's why in the sense that what a lot of us grow up understanding happy to be which is i want this so i'll get this so it makes me feel good and that's finding happiness outside of ourselves which i have a sneaking suspicion that that which is funny because if we are all the same if it's all coming from the same source then we don't need to find happiness everlasting happiness from um a movie or a person because it's all coming from that same source the same source being us so instead of i want that i have i which is a lack of perspective you know i want that i don't have it i want it so i have it now it makes me happy but and i heard this somewhere but <laughs> anything that like any happiness or what was it something like anything that or anything that makes you happy for a reason won't last or you know will because you know it, things change they expire so Let, let's say you love a particular candy bar and it makes you the happiest ever well now you are dependent on that candy bar being in existence being produced and being available for you uh to maintain that happiness and this is a great analogy for it exactly you were just talking about about finding happiness outside of yourself um, it, but as far as integrating kind of the pleasures of this place, I think that's necessary too. Uh, I'll equate it to taking a trip to somewhere you've never been and then just sitting in the hotel room the whole time just because you're happy you're there, but you don't want to find happiness out external from yourself. Part of the joy in this place, I think, it comes from discovery and it comes from learning new things, experiencing new things, especially kind of the boring 3D stuff that's around here. Because you get to interact with some really cool muggles and that's a lot of fun. And this is not like a hierarchy thing. And you and I know this, but just kind of for the audience, not, not saying we're better than anyone because that's definitely not the case. We're the furthest thing from thinking that. But it is kind of interesting to where whenever you step into this reality, it's like you're going to Italy for the first time. You're going to want to go try the food. You're going to want to go meet people. You're going to want to go down to the beach or explore or do whatever. Uh, you know, and learn about the history of this place and learn about what there is, what Italy has to offer you. And so that's kind of how I equate being born into this place or arriving into this place, whatever this place is, because it does feel way more experiential than um, task oriented or kind of judgy. You know, it's like that, that definitely comes mostly from you and anyone external from that, you can just write off as just, well, that's the way that they feel about it. Uh, but this this idea of coming here and then just isolating like uh, Tibetans in caves or something like that, <clears throat> I I don't resonate with that only because there's so much dope shit here. There's so many cool things to experience and explore and people to talk to. For some people, that's a path of um, enlightenment that they've either found or been told that's necessary, which either way you want to go, that splits off in a couple different directions. But I think that being here, being free being the most you you can, exploring these kind of concepts, but also having a foot in the reality in which your feet are planted is very, very important. I kind of always say, you know, I'm the kite, my wife is the string. She grounds me for sure. She's got a very great uh, head and she's a great concept or, or a mediator between the two concepts and ideas. She is very grounded, very uh, logistical, but also will go down these awesome rabbit holes with me. And I think that, you know, you need that. You need people like that uh, to allow you to be set more free. So with your, with your, the way that you're raising your son is, is something I wanted to ask you about. And then we'll probably wrap it up here on, the, on, on this final point, just for this time, but I'll definitely have you back. 
One of the interesting parts that I find with people like us or folks that have gone through spiritual awakenings is all I mean by that is that they weren't generally raised in a, in a household where this was not only acceptable and not the devil's work, um, but also it was encouraged and loved. And, and you're um, given the opportunity to explore that. Right. I think it's a very rare uh, household that that has that as its paradigm. I was raised very, very differently than what I am now. Now, do you think that that we gravitated towards that because it's the opposite of how we were raised and then it's kind of an independence type of a thing and you just want to be the opposite of what your parents are, you know, you just want to rebel and do that? Or do you think that that's inevitably where everyone goes to that's resonating with that idea as far as like the, you know, and what I mean by is breaking out of religion, um, you know, liking um, bullshit 3D things that don't mean anything that, you know, are draining your energy or your loose or that are there to distract you on purpose. Uh, it it seems like maybe with the way that you're raising your son, since you are able to kind of grasp and embody these concepts, do you think that eventually he'll flip and go completely against what you want to do just for the sake of rebelling? Or do you think that he'll resonate with these ideas? I mean, I'm asking you to predict the future here, but I'm really just asking about what the personality of people who break out of their paradigms are. Oh, that's interesting. I think he will probably want to do the opposite for a while, and that's fine. What I, because my parents, my family are all, my mom, my dad, my brother, all engineers. So it's very, very different from, so I still feel a little, you know, woohoo. You should have heard the first time I told my mom I was working for Zane and she's like, he does what? <laughs> and I, and, I, and yeah, I actually, it was another one of those things to push myself out of my comfort zone. I actually recorded a phone call. My brother, I called my brother first to uh, tell him and his wife to tell him that I was working for and with somebody who removes demons and whatnot. And so that was a fun one for me, but yeah. It, so I guess Yes, I've always had that sense of wanting to be different and bring, you know, kind of that rebellious sense in my family. But at the same time, I do feel pulled like I don't, not that I don't have a choice, but this is just the right place for me to be. And then with my son, the, he's still very young. So I haven't had to go into the, you know, nitty gritty of how this will all play out yet. But the basic idea I think that I would like to impart upon him is just a real fluid sense of who he is. You know, he has, he definitely, he'll have an identity and you all, we all have one, but the, I think the main thing I want to show him is that he's not defined by it. And he had, he has it to play with basically. It's not something that will trap him in any one way. So and even then, if he goes off, you know, the path, if he goes in the opposite way, well, one that then that would be his destiny to do so. But you know, then that's that's fine. But I'm hoping then with what I'm able to show him that there won't be so much guilt and shame that go along with it. So if I can impart that this is all just a big web of stuff rather than a right and wrong sort of universe, then no matter what he does, will come from a place. It won't come from a place of shame and pain and it will, you know, whatever he does next, I'm hoping the idea is he'll act just with the understanding of, you know, that all the people out there really are, you know, just extended family. So why would I want to go out of my way to harm them? And even if I do, their extended family, you know, it's, it, it's all love anyway. So I, I think it's just the main thing is just the fluidity and the the lack of being one thing, because that's the iron, ironic part is none of us are one thing. We're multidimensional. So it, you know, we love or we feel safe when I think at least for a while when we define ourselves as something, but which is totally fun to do. You're right. It's fun to play around in this world. It's totally fun. I mean, I've jumped out of plane before. That was, that was really fun. You know, like I'm so glad that that has the, that that's on this plane for me to do. And that's something else. I want to do all the things. I just want to be not super attached to like meeting them. Yes. So, um, yeah, I guess the fluidity, the fluidity. 
I, I dig that. And I think the, the message that you said in there that's going to stick with me the most uh, is the love part of it. But it, We're all love. We're all one. Look out there and see everyone. Because if, if we're absolutely honest with each other, and we can be here, but if everyone else is honest with themselves, the religious ideologies that most of you were probably raised in does not feel that way. Uh, and even if they say it, the subcontext of all the other information that's surrounding and propping up that one small sentence of an idea does not match. It's a very unsolid ground to support that idea that we're all one, we're all love, you know, and all that stuff. They don't even come into that. But the whole love thy neighbor and all that, that's not actually accurate because you've got to only love the people that fit into your paradigm from that model, right? But what you're teaching and what you're raising is someone that will love everyone no matter who they are because they realize that it's just their path. And I think that that is is one of the most beautiful things that anyone could ever say or raise uh, a child in the environment of, because that is something. Even if they go some other way or they end up making some decisions that don't you don't necessarily ideologically agree with, still that, that undercurrent, that foundation of that we're all here as one and that it's all love, now go play, that that to me is like the most beautiful and simplest thing you could do. So I'm, I'm glad you're raising a child. I'm glad that you brought another one in here for us to hang out with. So. <laughs> Nice job. You're you're a tremendous young lady. You really are. Thank you. He should be fun in, you know, 10 years or so. Then you see what happens to oh gosh, I don't know. Then he'd be entering teenage years. So I don't know if you want to check in on check in on him at that point. I definitely do because I'm interested in all the people who because if you look at this, this is a mass spiritual awakening right now, or it's at least a yeah. realization uh, to a grand scale where a lot more folks are identifying with what uh, we were just talking about here about the love and that we're all one. And so I'm interested to see what the next generation is going to look like after that by being raised by folks like this, because this is what you talk about, about these great cycles and shifts that I think occur. And a lot of other people agree with that, too, that occur on these long scales here. And they've happened since the beginning of time and will continue to happen where, you know, uh, energies ebb and flow. And I've kind of related it to the yin yang where, um, you know, we went through this beautiful enlightenment period. If you want to look at alternative history, things like Tataria and all that kind of stuff. And then now we're kind of in the in the young part of it, you know, the creation, but also the destruction part of it, uh, where it's kind of dark, it's kind of heavy, but this next generation, what you're raising and what everyone right now that's having this spiritual awakening that's chosen to participate in that, that we're all love and that we're all one, I'm fascinated by this and I cannot wait to see what uh, comes out of it. I think that that's, this is cool. That's a lot of fun. Well, just imagine if the generation that doesn't have to break down their old identity Yes. You know, so yes. to such an extent, so they could get if they don't have that massive period of just pain and letting go, if it's shorter, at least, then just think of all the things that could happen. Yeah, it's like they can get to it. And this is one of the things we talk about when we talk about like suppressed technologies or these systems that are in place that are just quicksand for you that just impede the bare basic fun stuff that's around here. And it, it's that that I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to playing in that. And it's nice because it kind of feels like, you know, the older generations uh, prop up the foundation for the future ones. Well, it's interesting because we're kind of this generation during the spiritual awakening, we're doing both. We're tearing down an old system that was well outdated uh, and building a new one simultaneously. So not only are we destroying by uh, but still maintaining the infrastructure and for all of us to like live. Uh, but also, you know, we're creating this new world in which our children of the future don't have to go through the same things as we did and don't have to dig out of the same quicksand. We're laying a foundation for that to where all they have to do is start from zero, you know, just start from zero, not behind the line like most of us did. Uh, I think there's, you know, of course, elements to this that can be argued that it's necessary for development. But I think that like what you said, it, it's, is still going to be part of development. It's just now you don't have to struggle to have these extraordinary uh, experiences that you're capable of interacting with here. So um, I, I think you're great. I think that we're going to wrap it up here. Did you have uh, any uh, final thoughts or anything before we part? Oh, yes. Actually, there's this one thing I wanted to plug. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but it's the Expanding Reality podcast. <laughs> I think it was uh, begun in uh, January of 2021. I heard a rumor that there's going to be a hundred episodes out by the end of uh, this year, you know, the 31st of December. If anyone's heard of it, you know, you should check it out. It, it sounds pretty cool. I, I, I got to check that out. It sounds like a cool show. Thank you. That's very sweet. <laughs> very, very, very sweet. And yes, we are on track to hit a hundred this year. It's going to be 
a booger bear, but I'm going to do it. I think I just need to pop one in extra uh, to get that done. But it's been crazy. This has been a crazy ride. Uh, but thank you so much. You're incredibly sweet. And of course, I will link uh, Soul Space in the bottom uh, for everybody to go check out. And um, just you're, you're wonderful. Of course, you're Soul Tribe, and you know that. And you're welcome here anytime. You and I also are colleagues on something that we're not going to make an announcement on yet. But uh, stay tuned, guys. Uh, there's some big stuff going on. Uh, for definitely for next year for 2022 so 222 crazy year this one was the the 2020 was the tear down this was the foundation next year's the creation so let's let's get it going let's do it high vibe i'm ready how about you oh i'm ready talk talk to me next year uh well i'm back on here next year it'll be i'll have plenty to plug yeah you'll be back before then but absolutely yeah yeah we'll have plenty <laughs> to talk about okay well uh caitlin thank you so much well, thank you so much for having me That was just an awesome conversation. Uh, Caitlin is wonderful. It's very refreshing to be able to have a conversation like that with somebody who's willing to be that honest with themselves and how they feel. And I'm grateful for that. That that was really cool. We both even told each other off air that uh, we were kind of funky or going through it. Uh, but then after that uh, interaction, we both felt a lot better just about everything. And I think that having conversations like that is important to kind of get stuff out. You know, I know that maybe you guys found it pretty cathartic as well and that you're able to resonate with some of the uh, concepts that we talked about there, especially with just identity. It's just, who are you? You know, what are you, what are you here to do? And I think that those are important questions to, to kind of touch base back on uh, whenever we're going through things like we are now. So uh, just know if you're out there listening that you're not alone, that we're all here with you, and that uh, if you need uh, anybody to talk to, just email the show. Uh, I'm very reachable. So just check the show notes below for expandingrealitypodcast.com. There's a contact section on there. Uh, anything you'd like to reach out, any questions you'd like to ask, any comments, whatever, bring it. I'm here for all of it. So thank you so much for the engagement that we've already been getting on the show. You guys are incredible. I just have the most amazing audience. I really wish that for everyone uh, that does something like this is uh, the way that you guys make me feel, which is wonderful. It's overwhelming, to be honest with you. So thank you. Uh, okay, so down in the show notes, like I said, expandingrealitypodcast.com. Go check that out. Go out into this beautiful place this week, guys, and uh, pick up a piece of litter, of course. Uh, go ahead and uh, buy somebody around you a coffee or a meal or something like that. And hold doors open. Get out of the damn left-hand lane. Everybody knows that's annoying by now. Get out of the left-hand lane. But above all, go out into this beautiful place, whatever the hell it is, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.